GNC Lake Codex. It's going to be so good. I can't wait to not be worrying about finishing off all this stuff for LVO. Can't wait to hear what Danny has to say about it. So let's delve into the book. So we've got the Gene Steeler Cults Codex. Um, one of the really cool things about this codex uh, is it comes with some extras. Um, so not only do you get this lovely book, but you also get some uh, blip token markers for your cult ambush, as well as a nine inch range ruler to help you with all those, uh, am those uh, underground ambushing units as well. And uh, it's double sided, so it's not like it's only ever print even printed on one side, but a nice little a uh, nice little addition to the book itself. Super needed, right? Yeah, for sure. Because you're going to need to be, you're going to need to know what nine inches is, like more than Dave's mom. So, <laughs> get into the book itself. First of all, like again, GW just nailing it with with original artwork in this book. Um, great background, great fluff, as per the usual. Uh, really good pictures, like thematic, like they do a really good job of adding like smoke and stuff like that in there. So it actually looks like it's a civil war happening in all of these pictures. And you can kind of get the look and feel of what are essentially uh, Xenos terrorists <laughs> going to town on the Imperium. Some gorillas? Yeah, <laughs> but not the band. Uh, so uh, again, like I love this art so much. Like these Gene Steelers just ripping into this, into the Cult Mechanicus. Uh, tearing the silly looking head off that robot. <laughs> uh, they're like digging around in his insides and stuff. Just really great. Um, so it kind of goes over what, there was, the fluff starts kind of like with what a cult insurrection looks like. So what do these guys do to like prepare? How does a gene stealer cult like infest a world? So kind of uh, all the stuff that they would normally go over in this book as, as that they detailed especially well in their last codex in seventh edition. So some of this stuff is kind of, it, I don't want to say it's reprinted from that, but it's kind of this in the same vein, but updated um, with some of the new units that they've added uh, for, uh, for this, uh, this new codex. Yeah. They, they've really come a long way with it ever since they started with space Hulk with the G. Oh yeah, for sure. I mean, just, just, Fleshing it out, it is absolutely, and then like they did uh, the go the what is it the ghost star the ghost star uh, brood that they came out with, which was just like the single the single piece uh, gene stealer cultist with the aberrants and everything else, and they've really just it's incredible to me how much they've added on to this faction in just a short amount of time, like uh, it, that they've been like an actual faction. Like they've probably been an actual faction for maybe three years. I beg to differ. Sir. Well, I mean, there, in... were, there were mounted gene stealers on horses back in the eighties. <laughs> I should know I had them. Yeah. Okay. Fair enough. <laughs> um, so uh, it kind of goes over that. It goes over uh, uh, like some of the ways in which they take over a planet, like depending on how the planet like is uh, uh, like orientated, like a death world or, uh, like a, an agri world or whatever else. Um, so it's not just a gene stealer crash lands on the planet anymore and, and slowly starts to infect the, the local idiots. I mean, that's kind of it if you take it at its most basic sense, right? But you have to go through the gene stealer cult life cycle. So you start off with like the original patriarch and we'll go back to this nice little flow chart that they have here. Um, so the patriarch, uh, begets, uh, the first generation gene stealers, which are actual gene stealers, right? Um, oh no, I'm sorry. Those are acolytes. First and second generation are the acolytes. Third and fourth generation, um, let's see here, are kind of the more neophyte the looking. Hybrids. Yeah. Fifth generation, the gene stealer breeds true. So the fourth generation, when they have kids, it ends up like they give, they give birth to an actual baby gene stealer. That sounds terrifying. It is. I hope that happens to John. <laughs> well, we can only hope. <laughs> and so it kind of goes off uh, some of like the splinters that happen on the way, like when they become outriders or the Kelamor for the Acolyte Icon Ward, and then like the mutants, like the hybrid metamorphs or the aberrants. Aberrants, so good. Oh my God. And they, I can't believe they got better. <laughs> I can. Really? Okay. Oh, yeah. So then it goes over what the end game is, right? And the end game for Gene Steelers is the High Fleet coming down. 
which is what their ultimate goal is, but it's also a death sentence for them because they think they're going to be saved, but they ended up they end up getting devoured. I honestly think that's my favorite part of these dealer <laughs> cults because you got you think you got this thing going and it happens over forty and fifty generations and you're just so stoked and happy for it and you're just like here he comes and you're dead. Right. Everything is dead. The gene stealers turn on you and eat you. Mm-hmm. Or the other tyranid creatures kill you too. They don't kill you immediately. They wait until after they've killed all the other indigenous life forms. Well, you want to use them, you know. Right. Totally. So then, one of the new features of this book is they've added cults. So kind of like chapter tactics for space marines, each of the cults has, a, has additional special rules, which they have previewed on the Warhammer community site. Um, but I thought it was really interesting that they kind of give a different way to thematically theme your army if you want to from these cults because they like specialize in different things. Like cults of the four-armed emperor are all about like waiting for the perfect moment to strike and then coming at you with everything they, with everything they possibly have, which is so like it's, and they like meticulous planning. So all of their things are about, they get uh, a Vect stratagem, like agents of Vect. Um, they get uh, their command trait is plus D3 command points. Or I'm sorry, the warlord trait is that. Oh, so which is so it's a, good. It's a pre vect pre fact. And then they get plus one to charges uh, on the turn that they arrive on the battlefield, which is really good because it makes those eight inch charge. And playing Evil Sun's Oryx quite a bit lately, I know how good that is coming in from Deep Strike. It's crazy good. Um, the Hive Cult they kind of uh, uh, they kind of like are really rooted in militaristic. Um, like organizations, so they're like well known for uh, like seconding Astro Militarum units to their cause. And we'll go over the rules in a second. I just got really excited about that first one. Um, and then the Bladed Cog. I think thematically these guys are probably my favorite because they kind of infiltrate uh, uh, and like want to make a perfect blend of human, Xenos, and machine. Um, so they use like a lot of bionics they're, and that kind of Skitari. stuff. They're Kind of. Sealer cults? Yeah, kind of. Oh my god, I see conversions <laughs> in my future. Yeah. It's so awesome. Rusted Claw, these guys are like the survivalists of the Gene Stealer cults. So they will be there when the Imperium fades to dust, and they will be the only ones left because they're so hardy and they can live anywhere. Will they, though? I mean, yeah. I feel like they might well, be they, just eaten instead. Yeah, they may get eaten instead. But, you know, hey, it's good to have hopes and dreams, Dave. <laughs> now, the Popper Princes are the ones that uh, show up uh, in Vigilus right now. Yeah. Um, so this is the cult that they focus on in there. Um, and they're like zealots. So much in the same way that, uh, like they, honestly, they have like the zealot rule, which is the same as the one from uh, like Sisters of Battle Preachers and that kind of stuff, where they get to re-roll failed hit rolls in the first round of combat, which is really good. Yeah, no kidding. And then, so well, thematically, sorry, go ahead. No, no, I, this one is my absolute favorite. Though, Dude, they are just, so cool. They, it just thematically, I just liked everything about what I what I saw on the preview site because, well, I'll be honest, I haven't had a chance to read through this book <laughs> because I, I told Danny we got it and we went and to start to, and he took it from me. I punched him in the <laughs> face and stole it. I liberated this book, as and, I would like to say. And then he begged me to come over with my camera. <laughs> <laughs> well, somebody's got to record this thing. I'm not going to do it. <laughs> So, but I mean, like from the previews they had on the Warhammer community site, these guys were my favorite uh, because of the, the buff to um, the actual units. Yeah. And just in general, it just seemed, you know, it, like to fit me. So, I mean, I have sure. a ton of aberrants and other stuff like that that I can't wait to paint up like these. So to me, this cult is probably the most interesting to me game-wise. Um, I came up with a couple of interesting interactions. Um between like some of the special rules between Vigilus and some other stuff. And the amount of buffs that you can stack on the Twisted Helix is nuts. So um, if you've ever wanted things like strength, se strength seven base aberrants or- I want that every day. Strength six neophytes, cause why not? Yeah. Cause that's a thing that can totally happen too. Oh, actually my bad. You can totally get up to strength eight aberrants if you want to. So you can get- Well, that just seems OP. That's Wounded Knights on twos with those big hammers. That seems pretty rad. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so these guys are all about like pushing that mutation to the extreme. So they're about experimenting with like the alien uh, uh, genome in their bodies and like mutating it and making like the most powerful warriors. So they have a lot of aberrants. Um, and, uh, oh God, what's the name of the, uh, like the little uh, 
the leader that they have that does like oh, the, the biomorph uh, bio biophages. Biophages. That's right. Yeah. So and then they also have some other ones that are really cool, um, like just some uh, uh, just some basic uh, like generic gene stealer cults. So if you want to paint yours up differently, uh, oh, so those I was are the ultramarines of gene stealer cults. Those were the big like space marine chapters, right? Right. Okay. And these are the successors. Let's put it that way, right? They're right. lesser known cults. So as I am a huge fan of uh, 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 what is it? Uh, the Twisted Cog. No, 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 those guys were great, right? Oh. But the, the uh, Tyranid uh, High Fleet, uh, what is it? Jormungandr? That's the one, yeah. Uh, they have Can a Sun's... Can you say that again? Jormungandr. Okay. Yep. Uh, yeah, sorry. If you guys want to critique that, that's cool with me. <laughs> Make sure you leave a comment. <laughs> Make sure I'm saying it right. Because um, I don't want to sound like an idiot. Whatever, Vicka Tricky or Trellic yeah. Chickics. Vicka, Vicka, Vicka. Chicken? Vic a chicken. Yep. That's what we're okay. going to call it. Yeah, Vic and Chicken Nugget. <laughs> All right, so uh, Sons of Jormungandr, uh, super cool, uh, because the Jormungandr High Fleet is like my favorite one, because they're all about burrowing underground, um, which is... Uh, I can't imagine something more terrifying than a bunch of gaunts, like, popping up on your flank. So imagine gaunts and Gene Sealer Cult, because you can do that. That's a thing that happens. I prefer not to. <laughs> um, yeah, so check those out when you have a chance. Those are some other cool ones. And then... Uh, they have a map, of course, as they always do, uh, listing out some of the cult, different cult activities here. Um, so there's a lot of red X's on here where they've been purged because that's a thing that Death Watch like to do. Yeah, I'd like if I use that for my fluff for, uh, for my LBO <laughs> list. <laughs> awesome. Um, and so, uh, like, they even have a map of Terra in the corner here because Gene Stiller cults have made it to Terra. So that's a thing that could... Uh, not according to the Inquisition... Yeah, sure. sure. Yeah, okay. Fair enough. Uh, great little uh, synopsis of some of like the classic battles and stuff like that. Oh yeah, the Ghost Star Quintus Anomaly was the one that they released that initial plastic box set in the most recent times, right? Bef when they didn't have horses. <laughs> so. Oh man, is there actually a uh, fluff piece in there with, with Gene Sealer cults and horses? Because if so, uh, that would be some... I would be really surprised. I didn't get a chance to go over all of these, to be totally honest, unfortunately. That's um, all right. So, but yeah, hey, when you have a chance and you have the codex in your hand, like you should, because this is an awesome book, you'll have a chance to read all of these too. All right, uh, this one's classic from Kill Team. Yep. Nice two-page spread of that, which is cool. And then it goes over all the unit entries, uh, like uh, at what they do and some of the background for the particular ones. Um, mostly new artwork in here. Uh, they did recycle this patriarch picture, but that's okay because they've got, and they colorized some of these really nicely and made them look awesome or reach or recolorize them and change like the faction colors and stuff like that. Like when people take the World War II photos and colorize it. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, going over some of the new Gene Stealer called Heroes, of which there are a ton. Um, so I think they added f six new characters, I want to say. Uh, let's see. Well, okay, so, so the, we Magus, got... the Magus isn't new. It's nope. just a new model. Yep. And both of these characters are the same, too. The Primus, Primus and the Ac Acolyte Icon Ward. Yeah, they, and the Patriarch was the first one, right? All, right. Those are, all those are the same. But So you have the one that I think is the silliest name... Uh, because he's DJ Gene Steeler called <laughs> uh, with uh, with the Clamavusus. Uh, yeah, Clamavusus, which I is guess. just just a weird. I, I honestly Clamavus is the name of the unit. Clamavusus is plural. Fair. So, I, I feel like they just threw a, a dart, like they had created all this stuff, and they were like, "Dude, check out this cool model I made. <laughs> we gotta name him something." And they just threw like eight darts at a board and whatever. whatever <laughs> they, that's that's what they had. Because that's I'm just like, where did this name come from? Locuses, I can understand. Sure. You know, it, it kind of fits. They're, yep. They're a devouring insect. So, <laughs> yeah, okay. That Yeah, okay. So these guys are uh, like Vox Masters, so they intercept the enemy Voxes and distort them and also, like, proclaim the the greatness of the gods from beyond the stars. So They're the uh, genes they're called Skrillex, basically. Sure. Yes. I... Uh, now I'm going to imagine every time I set one down that he's got, like, some dubstep playing. Oh, and, like, I when mean, the bass drops, all my guys charge. You know what? Anybody, anybody <laughs> that watches this gets this far, first off, I'm surprised. Uh, second <laughs> off... Good for you. Yeah. yeah well done. <laughs> second off, if you don't take one of these and green stuff Skrillex hair over the top on one of them, I will be sadly disappointed. Well, I don't think any of them have hair. Yeah. Well. Cause, Mine will. Yeah. All right. But... 
super cool looking model. Great sounding unit. Uh, Locus is also super Man, cool Man, I love model. that model, yeah. Oh, it just, it looks so awesome. He's got like the swords on his back. He looks like he's just ready, yep. right? And that's what he is. He's a bodyguard. Yep. Um, then they have, oh man, there must be eight new characters, at least. No, this, that was four. That was two. One, two. Yeah, no, three, this four. is four. Four, yeah. Yeah, okay. Anyway, so we have the, uh, uh, the Sanctus, which is their assassin, and he has either a sniper rifle or a venom blade. Now, I don't know if the kit builds the sniper rifle because all I've seen is the, is the blade. That's all they've shown so far. However, I have seen a, an image with the sniper rifle. Cool, good, because his sniper rifle is really good. And uh, his little familiar, we'll talk about that later, it also helps him out quite a bit. Keller Morph, amazing. Like, what a great model. Oh, so and a good. hero of the people. Yeah, seriously good. <laughs> so good. Yeah. Watch your characters. And then they have the Nexos, which is, uh, like him combined with the, uh, the Clamavus, is probably one of the more viable units that you're probably, you're going to see a lot of Nexos on the table because any unit that you get CP regen without having to use a Warlord trait or uh, a Relic, amazing. Yeah. And the Biophagus is pretty good. Oh man, I just thought how you can get up to strength and nine. <laughs> if you Save roll it until we get to the yeah, end. Yeah, okay, cool. Blow my mind at the end. Biophagus, awesome. So that helps your Aberrants out quite a bit. Yep. Um, and then they have the uh, Acolyte Hybrids. Same thing. Uh, which is, yeah, yeah, same thing. And also the hybrid metamorphs. And the fluff behind these haven't really changed. And more or less the unit entries haven't changed, but we'll go over. There are some really important changes to both of these units as far as the game rules go. Uh, you got your neophyte hybrids. Those are your basic troopers. Soup, still, five, still five points. Still a good deal. Yeah. Like great little unit. Uh, pure strains uh, are literally unchanged with everything. So one of the things that I, I and I know they did this for game balance, right? Um, but while pure strain gene stealers and patriarchs have the cult rule, they don't benefit from the cult abilities, like the like the like the cult traits. So yeah, that's. I mean, that's good. I get it. Yeah, because <laughs> like, if you were gonna run oh, twisted helix yeah. like uh, pure strains, they would be base strength five and get plus two inches to their to their assault distance or yeah. their uh, advanced distances. So that basically gives them plus two inches of movement, and that's like silly powerful because when they go up to strength five then they become a threat for so much more in the enemy army um like vehicles are like no problem for them because they wound everything on fi on fives um aberrants abominants these mostly haven't changed but we'll go over like the changes that did happen with them uh and some great artwork for both of them as well well, um, and this is the first time that I've actually been in the Codex. This right. is the unit that was introduced with... Uh, well, the Abominant, the uh, Aberrants were in the Codex, right? The 7th the edition one, they were in there. Um, oh, but, you're, you're right, because it came out after G, uh, Death Watch Overkill. Right. So, but, um, but they, weren't, they weren't particularly great. Um, they've been pretty good now that they've, when they released uh, Tooth and Claw. Uh, they released some updated rules for them, which they've updated a little bit further. Um, they're... They're better than they were in that, so uh, enough said there, I think. Um, and Abominance, still just a beast, like really powerful. So one of the really cool new units that they've come out is the uh, Adelan Jackals. Um, so these guys are biker outriders for the Gene Stealer cult. So they kind of like find hidden caches and like do ambushes and stuff like that on people with speed instead of via all, all, all the way cunning. Um, we'll go over the rules. Um, there's also the Jackal Alphys. Um, so that's character seven, I believe. Maybe. I lost count. Yeah, there's a lot of new characters. Honestly, I'm too busy thinking right now that they finally gave me back Gene Stealers on horseback. horseback. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you could just use a horse instead of a bike if I you mean, wanted to convert them, well, Dave. I could, but I mean, technically they've got horsepower in the bikes, so you know. The power of multiple horses. Right. So, OP. <laughs> Way improved. Way improved. Yeah. <laughs> Um, the Achilles Ridge Runners are another new unit. I actually, so when I saw the rules previewed, I was like, eh, this might have like Orc Buggy Syndrome, where it looks really fun, oh. like it's fun to play, and it's like a cool looking model. But I wonder if the rules are going to be good. I think they're at least decent. Like, I, it's it's a great way to fill out fast attack slots in addition to the Adelon Jackals. Um, and they have some neat little interactions that you can do with them. So... If anything else, it's just a cheap gun platform that's probably only a little bit more expensive than a Sentinel. It's got a lot of really good guns, right? It's some decent guns, yeah, yeah. for sure. 
Um, Goliath trucks, um, so Goliath trucks and Goliath rock grinders, uh, both good, both improved. Um, just, if, if anything else, just in points. So, um, and then there's the Neophyte Regiments. So the Neophyte Regiments includes the, the Brood Brothers entries that you can take in the army. So that's uh, your actual Brood Brother squad, which is a troop choice now, which is like an Imperial Guard squad. It's just an infantry squad, right? Uh, with very similar rules, um, except they get plus one leadership um, and they get the Cult Ambush rule. In fact, all of the units in here get Cult Ambush. So... You get Chimeras, Sentinels, Lehman Russes, all of them can cult ambush, so they start off with markers. Huh. Um, now, they don't have the cult keyword, so they don't benefit from, like, your cult abilities, but they also don't stop your, your detachment from being, like, cult-centric. So you can't increase the strength of your Lehman Russ by one by having Twisted Helix over there uh, genetically modifying it? Well, no, because he doesn't have the cult keyword. Okay. Right. So, um... Yeah, you can't have a strength nine Lehman <laughs> Russ running people over. Because uh, <laughs> I would. I would. I know you would, Dave. Yeah. That's, that's solid gameplay. Um, <laughs> that's why I'm not at the top table ever. <laughs> so uh, one of the cool things, though, that I, I, I like that you can do a shell game with these guys, right? So you can basically wait until after the first turn to deploy your entire army. You just have the little markers that you set out with the cult ambush rule, um, which is what we're going to be going over next after we look at the color section. So wait, you can't... You can null deploy with the blips. Yep, because they count as being on the table. I would flip this right now <laughs> if it wasn't for the fact that it would hit the camera. Right, yeah. <laughs> it's your camera. I mean, you can flip I, it if you want. Yeah. Just watch my models. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so you can do some really cool stuff with that. That's insane. <laughs> this army is going to be nuts. Like, I... Like, full disclosure, and I'm going to give, like, a recap of what I think. This army is definitely top tier. I don't know that it's going to be meta changing because I think if you're preparing for a lot of other armies, you're going to be good against these guys, but you just have to really watch how hard they hit. And we'll, yeah, we'll be going over like that in more detail as we go through here. Um, so they gave you a new Magus model, a new female Magus, which is Princess great. Princess thickness. Yeah. <laughs> I, love I love that model. Yeah, she's hippie. So good. <laughs> um, super, super great model. Um, uh, let's see here. And then they kind of just go over uh, different color schemes for some of the different regiments and things like that. Um, uh, I like the Adelon Jackals in the yellow. Dude, that is awesome they're, they're sexy. So, uh, yeah. I don't know what it is about yellow, but I've been really digging it lately. Um, the new heroes. Okay, so hey, here's a great page that shows all the new I, heroes. Well, it's a shame we won't have time to count them. And... Yep, go. <laughs> and fuzz out. All right, no, um... <laughs> what you... So there's uh, there's six or seven right here. So you've got the Nexus, the Cl uh, the Clemovus, Jackal Alphas, uh, the Biophages, the Ketomorph, the Locus, and the Sanctus. Now, now these are all characters, but they're not necessarily headquarters. Correct. The only headquarter out of here, uh, out of the new ones, is the Jackal Alphas. Which is which is interesting to me. Yeah. Because it allows you to not have to take a. Um, a crap, uh, you know, a non-existent, you know, non-useful headquarters with your um, outrider detachment. Sure. So you could take just all bikes and be ready to roll. I yeah, I agree with that to a point. All of the Gene Stealer cults characters are so good. It's just it's so hard for me to make a decision on what is going to be like the best HQ choice because they all bring a lot to the table. I don't think you want to bring an abominant if you're not bringing uh, aberrants. No, I don't. I, I, agree. I don't think that that's a great choice. I don't know if that's a great choice. Uh, it, I mean, it'll be fun, and he'll smash some stuff, right? But I don't know if that's the best choice. Um, I do think all the rest of them are super viable, though. Like uh, the Jackal Alphas, if you have any kind of shooting in your army, is amazing. Um, the Magus is is a great low cost psyker um, instead of the Patriarch, who went down a substantial amount of points. Um, and then there's the. Uh, uh, the Primus is also great. Uh, he he boosts your attacks by a lot because he gives plus one to hit within six inches in combat, which is great. Um, the Acolyte Icon Ward still gives the six up feel no pain within six. And if you take a special banner, he can give plus one strength to all the units within six too, which is very primo. And the Patriarch is a monster, and I'll go over my monster Patriarch build here in a moment. Um, 
So great list here. I'm not sure how many points this one is. I didn't have a chance to go through it. Um, if I were to guess though, I would say this is about 2,500 points. Okay. Maybe, maybe a little bit, maybe, maybe, maybe less, maybe a little bit more. It's right around there. So the part that everyone's been waiting for, the rules. Um, so the first rule that they have is unquestioning loyalty. So unquestioning loyalty is the same thing that they had before, is a very, is a very similar rule to the, what the characters had before. Um, basically, as long as a gene stealer cults model uh, is within three inches of any cults or brood brother models, um, on a four plus, they can slough off uh, wounds or mortal wounds to the, to the friendly squad. So this gives your characters effectively a four plus damage reduction roll that just gets you know passed on to the the minions makes the survivability of the characters pretty good even if their normal stats wouldn't indicate that they would be survivable. Okay. Um, and there are some ways that you can boost this. Um, there is one warlord trait uh, for. Uh, I'm trying to remember which one it was. Oh, we'll, we'll get there, but it gives you uh, that on a two plus, which is which would be <laughs> a real pain huh. in the butt. So one of the ways I thought about using this, which would be really cool, so one of the things that they can still do is take a detachment of Astro Militarum and make them Brood Brothers. Right, but it's one detachment of Astro Militarum for every one detachment of Gene Stealer. Correct, and you only get half command points for that, which is a change. Um, but they get plus one leadership, uh, which is cool, um, and uh, they can use Unquestioning Loyalty. So if you have a unit of 20 conscripts... Ooh. With, <laughs> I'm just thinking like a patriarch uh -huh. with that rule, like just being able to slough off wounds would be so tough. <laughs> wow. So some cool interactions there again. And uh, one of the other cool things you can do is slough off to aberrants. Um, so you, so if you're like, if you have an abominant, right? And he has a five plus ignore wounds. So he tries to ignore the wound, fails. Unquestioning loyalties it to the aberrants and they get another chance at five plus to stop it as well. Oh. <laughs> That's so yeah. There's a lot of cool like little interactions that you can do there to try and get rid of wounds, right? So the other more complicated rule is the cult ambush rule. So cult ambush rule takes it goes into effect in one of two ways. You can do the normal cult ambush, or if it's an infantry or biker unit, they can do the underground ambush. So the underground ambush allows them to deep strike more or less. So they can come in on the second turn. They come nine inches away. Um, like that, that's what they do, okay. just like normal. Now the cult ambush, the other rule, basically for every unit, you put a blip marker out. Um, um, if you are in a transport, you, put, you declare what, what's going in the transport um, at the, and then put out a blip marker. You don't have to assign a blip marker to a particular unit. So you just put out all the blip markers for your units. And then if you go first, at the start of your movement phase, you just pick where all your stuff goes. Pick where it goes underneath the blips. Well, so the first model in the squad has to be placed within three inches of the blip and you measure from the center. Oh, I, I mean, it doesn't matter what unit is going under no. which blip. You just go, okay, and set start This blip setting. is here, this 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 unit is in this blip, this unit's on this blip, et cetera, et cetera. So you go down the so line. So when you reveal them though, you can actually put any unit under any blip you want. Correct. Okay. There's a stratagem. That seems really good. Oh, and also, so if you go second, at the end of the enemy movement phase, you get to the side where all your stuff goes. So depending on where they've moved their heavy hitters, you can hide your Lehman Russes, you can hide um, like your more vulnerable units away so that you can uh, like kind of really play an awesome shell game with them and make sure that your units are totally out of line of sight or really hard to hit, or at least in cover, right? Follow the queen, follow the queen, follow <laughs> the queen. And then uh, uh, there's a stratagem for one CP that lets you put out Instead of one blip token, you get four. So you get three extras that may not have units under them. So you can really screw with your opponents. So when you put a squad down, you put the first model within three inches of the blip token. And then every other model from the unit has to be within six of that first model that's placed. But other than that, and you can't be deployed outside of your deployment zone. So you can't get yourself a like forward, which I, which was the, my first thought. Good Lord. Um, but you know, that's cool. And there's another stratagem too, that lets you move uh, up to three of your blip tokens for one CP 12 inches. But not out of your deployment zone. Right. Okay. Yeah, they have to stay in your, all the blips have to stay in your deployment zone. You can't get crazy with them. It's just some 
some Hicks aliens craziness <laughs> happening there. So, wow, that's a lot of rules, right? Like for that one little thing, that's going to be really complicated, and I can see that being screwed up by a lot of players initially. But it doesn't. I mean, it doesn't sound that tough. It really doesn't. I mean, it, it, at sure. first glance, it sounds tough. Like, when the article came out and everybody was reading it, it was... I was, uh, like, scratching my head. I'm like, okay, hmm, uh, I'm not really sure how this works, but I guess I'll see when the book comes out. Right. And and now, having you tell me about it, it I mean, it sucks for the person you're playing against. Right. But it doesn't sound that difficult. Okay, that's fair. It, it makes more sense now. Good, good. Thanks, Danny. I learned something. <laughs> do 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 all right, so <laughs> um, we have the cult war gear list. Uh, they don't have a ton of options for their war gear because it's pretty much set depending on the vehicle. Um, so, yeah, uh, there's some vehicle upgrades. The Adelands have the most, um, and we'll go over them when we get to that unit entry, but they basically can be equipped in like a ton of different ways. So you can really customize that unit in particular. So... The king, the king bad, the patriarch. So did the, the patriarch change at all from the index option? Uh, the stats of the model did not. Okay. The points did. He dropped about uh, 35 points. 35 points. Didn't he also drop in chapter approved, though? No. Okay. The, uh, uh, the broodlord dropped in chapter approved. Ah, but his, okay. his is different. He's actually 10 more points than a broodlord right now. Um. So the reason he's 10 more points is because he gets cult ambush. And he has oh. the Yeah. Cool. <laughs> and he has the option to take familiars. So the fa he can have up to two, right? Up to two familiars. Okay. Um, so those are like ablative wounds. And then uh, once per game, um, at the end of your, at the end of the psychic phase, you can kind of say, my familiars are empowering me, and he gets to cast an extra power. And so he's cast one, deny one. But he gets two powers now instead of one, which is great. So it gives him a little bit more, a little, a little bit more options. In addition, those little familiars are also extra wounds. So if you want to slough off wounds under the familiars and have them take hits first, especially if you're taking a hit from like a multi-damage weapon, that's pretty cool. Oh, little uh, little tiny gene stealer savior protocols. Exactly. Ex well, yeah, without a roll though, and he still has. Uh, uh, the uh, unquestioning loyalty. Now, he doesn't have it because he doesn't take hits from, for other people, but other people can take hits for him because he's the boss, man. He doesn't, <laughs> he doesn't, he doesn't stoop down to that level. <laughs> see, see a little guard, a guardsman going, can you take this for me, please, boss? Eh, all right. Why not? <laughs> pass. Hard pass. <laughs> All right, so, uh, but yeah, he's still great. Still has six attacks at strength six, rerolling failed to wound rolls at minus three with D3 flat damage. Um, and he rerolls failed wound rolls, and at any time he rolls a six for damage, or for to wound, he hits at minus six AP and three flat damage. Okay. Now, there's a, I'm going to go over my, the badass patriarch combo, right? I'm listening. So, the Patriarch already has a beastly stat line, right? He's already six attacks. He's already got strength six. He's really nasty. So he's um, like a Primaris uh, captain. Dude, he's way better than a Primaris captain. That's he impossible. Could, he could beat the ever-living crap out of a Primaris captain. Okay, so he's anyway, really good. He's real good. So if you make him Twisted Helix, they have a relic that, that gives you a plus one attack, plus one toughness, plus one wound. So that takes him to seven attacks, right? That seems really good. Okay. Okay. Their uh, Warlord trait gives plus one damage to melee weapons. So he does D3 plus one damage, and any sixes to wound, he gets four flat. I mean, and AP minus six. That doesn't sound that, but that bad. Okay. I mean, I mean, fair enough. But then again, I've never played at the top table, so I wouldn't know. So then you can cast Might from Beyond, which is a power that they've had previously, which gives him plus one strength and attack. So now he's up to strength seven. Okay. With uh, eight attacks. Then in the Vigilist book, there's a new artifact um, that it's a vial and it's not tied to that particular detachment. And so you pop that on him and it gives him plus two strength, plus two attacks. So you can give him strength nine with 10 attacks 
hitting on twos with plus one to hit because he gives himself plus one to hit. So even if you're minus one, he still is hitting on twos. All right, so... And then strength nine, rerolling fail to wound rolls. Uh, mental note, kill the Patriarch <laughs> first if I'm playing against anybody who's watched this video. Got it, okay. So there's also some cool stuff that you can do with psychic powers with him as well, <laughs> where you can buff his leadership to a super high level and then debuff the enemy's leadership um, with either Tyranid artifacts, uh, powers, um, or stuff in this book. And you can make it so that if you cast a particular psychic power, basically there's one, um, I think it's called Psychic Onslaught, where you each dice off and add your leadership. If you win, you do a mortal wound to your opponent and you roll again, right? That seems fair. So if you can make it a difference of six, they can never win. So that will auto kill anything. And there's definitely some ways that you can boost him to leadership 13. And so you cast that power and knight dies. So that's a really powerful interaction that you can do <laughs> with this, with the, with the patriarch. Super solid. Good thing I just picked up a bunch of knights. <laughs> Why am I so bad at this game, Danny? Why am I always behind the curve? <laughs> All right, so moving on, uh, we have the Magus. Magus is another great model, a, ch a cheaper Psyker. And uh, let me go to his points cost really quick here. Uh, I wrote it down here on my phone. Um, anyway, the Magus still has basically the same stat line as he did before. Um, he's got uh, uh, the same number of attacks, same wound characteristic. Um, he still gives the benefit to friendly Gene Stealer cult units within uh, six inches where he gives them the Deny the Witch attempt. So any Gene Stealer cult within six gets a Deny the Witch, which is great. Yeah, really, really powerful. That's very good. Um, and he is 80 points. I believe that's the same amount of points. He might have been 75 before, I, I want to say. So, so I think he went up a little bit. Seems like going up just even a little bit is actually not It's enough. fine. Yeah. I mean, it's still super viable. He was one of the most chosen entries out of the book anyway. Um, so, oh, one other thing about him. Uh, so both of them can take the familiars. Um, familiars don't die when you use their uh, once per game uh, bonus power. They used to just die, like you'd have to kill the familiar off to use the power. Now the familiar sticks around, so he's an extra wound, which is great. And there are 12 points for those extra wounds, which... It's, it seems worth it, actually. Yeah, it's, it's not bad, especially for the... I think, especially for the Patriarch, it's really good for him. Okay. Um, the Magus is pretty good. Um, again, he's only got four wounds, um, so you want to try and keep him alive. He's going to get but hurt. He does have cult ambush, though, right? He can pop up in their back door. He does. In fact... Everything in this book, everything in the book itself has called ambush. Every, uh, yeah, everything does. Everything, even the even the Brood Brothers units. Okay, that's re that's really good. I mean, so okay, so and the Primus is pretty much he's exactly the same. So really he's different. different. So because they've changed the underground assault um, to be a little bit different now, uh, they've had. Uh, uh, but previously he gave, you got to roll two, you got to reroll the dice for when he came up because there was a chart of different, uh, things that could happen when you, um, when you oh, came right, up right. via the cult ambush. Since that's gone now, um, he has an ability. The first time this model is set up on the battlefield, select one enemy unit on the battlefield. Reroll to wound rolls of one for attacks made by friendly cult units that have the cult ambush ability while they're within six inch of this model when targeting that enemy unit. So that's not from, that's not just combat, that's shooting as well. So that's definitely a nice little feature. Rerolling once to wound is, is decent, and he still gives a plus one to hit within six inches. That's pretty good. And you can make him a little beat stick. Um, there's a new relic. Um, like an African rain stick? <laughs> <laughs> yes, Jave, an African rain stick. Okay. That's what it is. Yep, he shakes that. People get really weirded out. They're like, what is that noise? Is it raining? <laughs> I don't even know. Oh, it's like we're in L.A. or something. Yeah, God. It's uh, the worst ever. Uh, so, so he gets the uh, sword of the uh, sword of the Void's Eye, okay, um, which is uh, a plus two strength. It's, so it's over his normal bone sword. It's plus two strength, minus three AP, D three damage, and he rerolls all to hit and to wound rolls with it. So with four attacks, we're willing to hit and to wound rolls with that weapon is pretty cool. So he's a, he's a pretty solid, you know, close combat, and he's player. cheap too. Like he's not super expensive, which is great. But he's he's like a pretty solid baby smash captain kind of if you equip him out like that a little bit. I mean, he doesn't cost very much. He can pop up right next to you. Yeah, he's about 75 points. 
So, yeah, not bad. We start calling him Slash Captain. <laughs> yeah, right? Again, like, if you take him as Twisted Helix, then he's oh. Strength 5. God, stop saying Twisted Helix. I won't stop. I won't stop. I can't it's stop. It's so good. It's so good. <laughs> uh, so, I Icon Ward, uh, Aberrant. Is, yeah, the Icon Ward, the Abominant. Um, or the Abominant, sorry. Yeah, sorry. The Acolyte Icon Ward is the same points. Um, he does the same thing. He still can take the same Relic Banner, which is awesome. Giving plus one strength within six inches is just a really, really powerful ability. The Abominant, um, he did not change his rules. Um, however, he did go up in points quite a bit. He was 80 points. Now he's 103. I still think Which he, I understand, because he's really, really good, and yeah. he was under-costed at 80 for yeah, sure. Yeah, he's, he's really good uh, with the Twisted uh, twisted Helix. You can get him to, and the uh, Biologus. Uh, sure. You can get him to, what is it, uh, plus two strength to that, so you're smacking stuff with that big old hammer, the super hammer that he could have. Yeah. Well, his hammer's already times two strength, right? Right. So if he's Twisted, if he's twisted Helix, he'll go to strength 14. If you buff him with, you can buff him with the banner, to strength uh, 16, you can buff him with the spell or the, the psychic power to strength 20. Um, or I'm sorry, strength 18. Then you can do uh, the biophagus for strength 20. Uh, <laughs> that seems pretty good for 100 Yeah, that's points. not bad. That's I mean, not you've got to combo a lot of things to it, but it, it seems completely just like you're just going to start wrecking Primarchs. For sure. And like... Hard to say whether, like, he's better off trying to get into combat easier with, like, Forearmed Emperor, um, which is another really great choice, because um, then he gets plus one to charge when he comes out. Um, and you can give him a Warlord trait from the Vigilist book to also give him another plus one to charge, and friendly units uh, from that detachment within six also get that. So your Abominates can be a seven-inch charge when they come out, which is really good. I know people were saying that this was going to be the year of the Sisters of Battle, but I'm fairly certain this is the year of the Thanksgiving Cult. <laughs> I, yeah, this is this is going to be uh, this is going to be a real solid book. So you should probably know what's in it if you're going to be playing. Um, like if you're going to be playing against it the first time, it's going to be surprising the different st stacking and buffs that you can do. Yeah. I, Sorry, I, go ahead. I'm really surprised myself having. Isn't it cool? Like all the different. Yeah. yeah. I mean, just, oh my I god. Like the combo so far. It's great. And I love. This model. What a great model, too, it, right? Like, so it is good. so good. Um, so the Jackal Alphys uh, has a great sniper rifle um, that uh, it's, it has basically the same rules for a normal sniper rifle, except it's minus 2 AP and D3 damage, which is decent. Yeah, that's pretty uh, good. Um, she's minus 1 to hit from shooting, which is good. Nice little, nice little ability, because she only has 5 wounds, toughness 4, and a 5-up save. So no invul save or anything like that. Now, um, oh, hey, I'm sorry. There is a new rule for the Acolyte Icon Ward. What? Well, there is? Tell yeah. me all about it. So, I'm sorry, I missed this. So, the Bestial Devotion is re-roll all Bestial Vigor rolls of one for friendly cult aberrant models when their unit is within six inches. So, the Bestial Vigor is the five plus feel no pain that they get. So... And there's a way that you can buff it with plus one, so you could be four plus re-rolling ones to ignore wounds. That is solid. <laughs> that sounds really good. Yeah, that's great. Anyway, so Jack Laffus, back to that unit. Um, she has the priority target sighted, which is like a marker light that she does that she automatically hits with within 36. Now, what's a marker light? Oh, sorry, from Tau. So okay. Uh, from so what? <laughs> We're talking about cheese stealer cults. Enough with that. Enough of those other silly Xenos. I just no go men today. Nobody plays Tau, so I mean, <laughs> you know. You just wait, man. They'll they'll be they'll be back. Um, so man, Tau will be great against this army, actually. Don't say stuff like that. So well, they gotta have a counter somehow. Nate's right? gonna watch this video and he's gonna think <laughs> that he can beat Eric, and he it's can. not gonna happen. Okay, we'll see. All right, so um, priority target sighted. Uh, so this, the, what this lets you do is within 36 inches, you pick a unit, all of your cult units within six of her, or within 12 of her, if they're a biker unit, get plus one to hit that unit. You can only select a unit once per phase, so you can't, like, team up a bunch of jackal alphases and, like, fire one thing and get plus two to hit or plus three. Um, but, um, a really nice little buff, uh, for cult units. Yeah, it is. So, especially for, like, uh, uh, the new, uh, Outrider, the Ridge Runner. Uh, like on their mining lasers and stuff like that, you can get plus one to hit, so you could be hitting on twos, which is nice. I like the idea of a, a, of a vehicle mounted with a mining laser. Like they just drove straight to the mountain originally before it got converted to the <laughs> Cult. Like, 
Yeah, we're gonna John Henry this. We're going straight through, baby. That's right. Just, just plowing. Just. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, I, I love, I love this model, and I Great like the model. idea of taking uh, an outrider detachment. Now, it's probably not the most competitive, but for me, it's being more on the fluffy side of what I like to play. I actually sure. like the idea of taking her and two squads of bikes and, and the Atlan uh, outrider just. It, it just fit, you know, it fits. Sure, sure. It's, it sounds like fun. It, it would, would be, be really awesome. cool. It, it, and it sounds like it doesn't suck, which is something that usually when I have my ideas of what to take, <laughs> it happens, you know. So I would like to thank GW for making it so that players like me can still not be terrible. <laughs> so super, super good model. Like, what a great ability. Um, and note that that is uh, not from just shooting. That's also in combat. So it's a way that you can buff a unit to be... Uh, can, can you use it in combat or use it in the shooting phase if you're already in combat to target them? Because wouldn't you oh, have to... Oh, you mean the Jackal Alphas? Yeah, wouldn't you have to use that uh, buff to... It doesn't say that. It just says at the start of your shooting phase. She doesn't say she can't be engaged. I'm going to throw up a FAQ GIF right here. <laughs> well, I assume she just shouts and goes, over here. And if the guy's right in front of her, like, I mean, that's I'm pretty sure, obvious. I'm sure. <laughs> but can, can you imagine the so you could have aberrance getting the plus one to hit? Heck yeah! Oh my god! So you could be hitting on two plus with those hammers if you combo it up with a uh, uh, what's that guy called? Um, the uh, Primus. I, Primus. Yeah. Ugh. Nice. Good lord. <laughs> yeah, no big deal. Only strength sixteen hitting on twos, right? That's that seems that seems good. Mm. <laughs> mm. Rerolling ones to wound. Yeah. All right, so you've got uh, your Acolyte Hybrids, which are your standard troops choice, right? Um, they are pretty much unchanged from their Codex entry, except they dropped four points a model. So they were 11 points, now they are seven points a model. Now, when I compare this squad to Orc Boys, uh, I think, I think well, the Acolyte Hybrids probably hit better. Um, the Orc Boys are definitely gonna be a little bit tougher. Um, the Toughness three is gonna hurt as opposed to Toughness 4, um, but they're Strength 4, right? And their basic close combat weapon is Running Claws, so they get uh, minus 1 to armor saves against that. And they can take some great special weapons in the form of, like, the Heavy Rock Saw is amazing and cheap. It's only 10 points. Not to mention really cool looking. Heck yeah. And you can get them Strength 10, no problem. Yeah. At least. Higher than that, even. Um, and then you've got the Rock Drill and also the Heavy Rock Cutter and all of those drop points. Um, Let's see here. They're, uh, I think, 13, 17, and 10, respectively, for the Rock Cutter, the Rock Trill, and the Rock Saw. Um, so, pretty cheap. So, they get two attacks based with Running Claws, and then they get an extra attack from their Cultist Knife. Um. So, they get three attacks each at Strength 4. Uh, two of them are at minus one. Or if you roll six is two, and they're minus four. So, you know, sounds, sounds pretty good. For seven points, it's great. And they can Deep Strike. I'm sorry, did you say seven points? Seven points. Oh, that sounds good. <laughs> How much did Space Marine Scouts go down again? Uh, that'd be zero points, Dave. Okay, so they must not be as good as Space Marine Scouts, so I, I'm not worried. <laughs> okay, we're fine. The other change to these guys is they got the cult icon. Um, that was previously, to, uh, I believe it was 25 points per unit, and that's dropped now to 10 points, and that lets them reroll once to hit in combat. Oh, perfect. <laughs> um, what else? I'm trying to think if I'm missing anything. Oh, uh, the Hand Flamers uh, were Pistol D3, and now they're Pistol D6. So they, yeah, that makes sense. they can I, I, all have uh, hand flamers, um, which are, uh, they, they dr I think that they're dropped in points as well. Um, yeah, hand flamers are one point a model. Okay. So if you want to make them eight points, you can also give them a flamer pistol. Neat. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so next up on the list, we've got neophyte hybrids. Um, so neophyte hybrids, yeah, they pretty much seem the same as they were before. They're basically guardsmen. Um, they're five points a model. Um, you get, so there's a new troop choice called the Brood Brother, right? Which is effectively the same thing, okay. um, which are four points instead of five. But the advantage that these guys get is they have this cult's keyword and they have option to do a couple of other different pieces of war gear. Um, one of which may surprise you to learn is good now, which is the- <laughs> That would surprise me. The Weber. Because the Weber was bad before. Like, it just wasn't good. It, just doesn't, it doesn't even sound like a viable weapon, really. Well, it's like, it's just a weapon that's supposed to, like, suppress riots and stuff like that in the background. Yeah. Right? But 
it dropped in points significantly. It's one point a model. And it's a flamer that you can wound against either strength or toughness. And it's got a 16 inch range. So 16 inches auto hits D3 shots. And wow, you can wound against their strength or their toughness. That sounds really good. Yeah, it's really decent for, for one point. I think that's really solid. So I think you'll see that stuff a lot more. Um, so super solid there. Right. Next, we have the Brood Brothers Infantry Squad. Um, these guys can have, uh, if you want to, you can replace one of their guys, one, two of the guys with the weapons team, just like an IG squad. Um, I mean, that's basically what that is. It's an Imperial Guard squad, right? Pretty much that's exactly what it is, except they have plus one leadership. Okay. Already built into their profile, which is what the Brood Brothers, like, regiment bonus is. No, let, let me stop you just here for one second. Sure. What headquarters would you take if you were trying to create the Infected 32? Oh, okay, interesting. Um, let's see here. If I was trying to just make like some cheapo command points, right? Right. I would probably... So the cheapest HQ choice that you can take is the Acolyte Icon Ward. And he's 53 points. So it would be like 106 plus 120 so it would be like a little bit more than it would be 225 points for five CP. Seems like it uh, could be potentially worth it. Yeah, I mean, it might be okay. I mean, not not just trying to make that, but like if this was your, like your basic starter to your battalion. You know, sure. It, before you filled everything else out, you know, they, I, I feel like these guys are are just fit that role very well. Yeah, you know? yeah, no, they're a great wound soak. Um, they get cult ambush. Um, so you can definitely, uh, like throw them in the way of stuff, um, which is, w which is awesome. So they're a great buffer for your characters. So like as a bodyguard unit for your characters, it gives them effectively five extra, you know, like, I mean, depending on how many wounds they have, it gets them double their number of wounds just from unquestioning loyalty because they can pass off those wounds on a four plus, which is great. And they'll give you some extra firepower to boot. Cause you could take mortars, right? Sure. Uh, now, one thing to note, which I found very interesting in this book, mortars went up two points a model. Good. So mortars are seven points a model now, or seven points for a mortar. So I assume that that's going to be something that's going to happen in the new FAQ. Um, we'll see if that takes. Um, I would be totally good with that because mortars are probably, they're, they're less points than they should be. Well, we'll see how good they do at the, uh, the LBO. <laughs> I think they'll do just fine. <laughs> Um, so hybrid metamorphs are the next unit. Now these guys are an elite's choice and they're kind of like a dead end branch of the, uh, uh, the neophyte hybrids or the, I'm sorry, the acolyte hybrids, my bad. Okay. Um, so like when the Tyranid fleet starts getting closer, these guys start mutating. Um, and so they become like the shock troops of, uh, like their expendable shock troops that they throw out there. Now these guys are still pretty cheap. Um, they're two points a model more than your standard uh, Acolyte. Um, they do have an extra attack, which is really nice. Um, and they get a lot of the same, uh, a lot of the same uh, like uh, weapon options and things like that, except they can also take some mutated um, things. So like uh, Metamorph Talons or uh, a Whip and Rending Claws, or uh, you can take uh, a Metamorph Claw um, or Bone Sword. So you get some really cool like Tyranid-esque like options. So, um, like the Morning of Torrent, Talon gives them an extra attack and they rerolls one for those. Um, and then the Metamorph Whip lets them attack even if they die. And the Metamorph Claw gives them plus two strength. Um, so potentially they can be strength six without any upgrades um, at minus one AP, which is decent. Yeah. It's a nice little, nice little unit. Yeah. So they're a little bit better in combat for a little bit more points, but they're not troops. So I think ultimately these guys probably lose out to the Acolytes just because they're cheaper and they fulfill like a slot that you would be taking. So um, I could see them in some lists, but probably not in every list. Not like the other, not like, not like Acolytes. Okay, so Aberrants. Man, I can't say enough about these guys. These guys are nuts. Like what an amazing unit. So they take minus one damage from all attacks, which they had before. Right. And they ignore, they ignore damage on a, on a five plus. Yep. Which as we covered can be uh, made to re-roll, right? So with the Acolyte Icon Ward, they can re-roll once, and then there's a stratagem that leaves you plus one to your rolls for that, which is 
so good. And if you take them from the anointed throng, uh, there's a stratagem from there that lets you attack even if you die, after you die. So if they've already attacked and they kill you, you get to attack again. Amazing. Um, Live, die, repeat. Right. Exactly. So uh, you can equip these guys in one of two ways, the normal guys. Um, so you can either give them a power pick and rending claws, or you can give them a heavy power hammer. Now the heavy power hammer is for all intents and purposes a thunder hammer. It's minus one to hit, it's times two strength, it's minus three AP, three flat damage. But it, it sucks compared to the stop sign though, right? So the stop sign is only for the leader, right? Um, uh, let's see here. Is it, oh, okay, sorry. The, you can have up to two, you can have one leader for every five guys and you can have 10 guys. So you can have two leaders in there. They can carry the heavy improvised weapon. So it doesn't have to be a stop sign. I mean, it could be, Let's be honest. a it's road gonna, sign. It's going to be a stop or sign. Or a crosswalk sign. Or... Danger, children, <laughs> school crossing. Pelegro. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, so what that does is that gives you times two strength, minus one AP, two flat damage. But you get to make two attacks for every attack that you get. So that guy gets to swing six times. And he can be buffed to who strength... Uh, what, they start off in five so they can get to seven, right? Okay, so let's let's do this here, right? All right, math hammer me. So you've got plus one strength for, for Twisted Helix. Okay. You can give them plus one strength from the Biophages. Okay. You can give them plus one strength from the uh, from the special banner. And you can give them another plus one strength from the Psychic Power. So potentially you have four different ways to buff their strength, so you can make them strength nine. So that'd be strength 18 with the stop sign or the hammer, or the hammers. You don't have to. I mean, I, like that that's a lot. Like, there's not a good reason, really, to make them straight yeah, there's a great reason. Because you get to tell your buddies the next day that you beat a knight to death with a stop sign. <laughs> um, so they can either take the heavy power hammer or they can take the power pick. Now, of the two, I prefer the power pick. I think the power pick is the better choice. Really? I do. Okay. So the power pick um, is strength user minus 2 AP D3 damage. So it's not quite, it doesn't seem on the surface like it does as much damage, but for every attack that you make with uh, the power pick, you also get to make an attack with your rending claw. Okay, so you get to double your attacks basically. Right, and they're already strength five, so they're wounding most of the big stuff on fives anyway. Um, and so if you do the same plus four strength trick on these guys, you can get them to strength nine, so they're wounding knights on threes with a ton of attacks. That seems pretty good. It's uh, I'll... And you can buff Ooh. their attacks too. So there's there's different ways that you can buff their attacks characteristic instead if you wanted to, which lets you for each attack you get to double it more or less with that squad. So they're just so in so all of this stuff sounds crazy, right? Like it's already really good. But they also dropped in points from their tooth and claw, so they dropped two points a model. One for the the pick dropped a point, um, and the aberrant itself dropped a point. So there's 16 points a model. The pick is nine. The heavy power hammer is 16. So that's uh, expensive. That's, yeah. So it makes them 32 points a model instead of 25. Uh, how much is the, the stop sign? Uh, I think it's 10 points for the improvised close, the improvised weapon. Yeah, heavy imprecise weapon is 10 points. So. Oh no, we're getting attacked by a gene stealer. Yeah, you can hear its claws. Um, so, uh, next up on the list, we have Pure Strain Gene Stealers. These guys literally haven't changed at all. Haven't changed at all. They, they haven't gotten better, but they haven't gotten worse either. Right, yeah, no, and like, so with the addition of all the bonuses that the Codex has, like the stratagems and the relics and everything else, I think ultimately these guys are better. It's just that they have the cult rule, but don't benefit from any of the cult, of, like the cult traits. Yeah. Which, yeah, that's kind of a bummer. But it's not, it's not the end of the world. So Pure Strain Gene Stealers really haven't changed a lot um, over the course of this book. Um, they're pretty much the same as they were before. Uh, but that being said, with all the other benefits and powers and additions that this codex has, they're gonna be better ult ultimately just because of the different buffs that are available to them now. Yeah. So between different stratagems and uh, uh, like some of the different, like the Cult Ambush is probably less good for them now because that did get nerfed a little bit comparatively to what it was. But you can still pull off some of the great tricks and there's still a freight train yeah. when they hit. They really so um, one thing I was thinking of, rerolling ones to wound is something that they can do now, which is super cool with that Primus. That is a great ability. So 
Uh, happy with them still. Oh, definitely going to see those on the table. Oh, for sure. And uh, you can take, um, you can still take 20 of them in a unit, which is great. So no big deal. That's only 80 attacks. Yeah, you know. Pretty standard. Mm -hmm. Pamplona's gonna have the running of the gene stealers soon. <laughs> Jesus. All right. All right. So the clam of us, new character. Okay. These, in fact, a lot of the stuff that we're gonna go over next is all gonna be new stuff, stuff that we haven't seen before. So if you stopped watching because we were covering regular stuff, not knowing what's in here, jokes on you. Yeah. Because you stuff. won't hear me say this. <laughs> ah. All right. So the clam of us is um, is he's one of the new one of the new characters. He's an elite's choice, not an HQ. In fact. Almost all, i.e. the six six other new characters that they came out with, are all going to be elite's choices. So you have a lot of choices in your elite section. So he doesn't have any weapons except for an auto pistol, which is no big deal. That's not his job. He doesn't need one. Right. His job is the... To lay down the fat beats. That's right. The, proclaim, the, the proclaimer hailer. Um, so what this does is add one to the leadership of cult units within six inches. So that's one of the ways you can buff that patriarch leadership for the leadership bump. Um, and then he also gives plus one to advance and charge rolls for friendly cult units within six. So those guys popping up from uh, from ambush, plus one to charge. He can pop up with them, right? Heck yeah, he's uh, got the he's got the uh, cult ambush ability. Neat. In addition to that, he has the scrambler array. So the Scrambler Array, enemy units that are set up in the battlefield as reinforcements cannot be set up within 12 inches of him. So instead of 9 inches normally from like uh, Cult Amp or from like Deep Strike and stuff like that, he pushes it out to 12. So that's really annoying in itself, right? And then, <laughs> and there's more. Uh, at the start of the shooting phase, uh, roll a d6 for each enemy unit within six inches of him, and on a six, that enemy suffers one mortal wound. So he does a little bit of splash mortal wound damage potentially as well. Although, right. getting him with six within six is dangerous. This guy is easily 150 points, right? Uh, so you would think that, right? It, easily. So the Clemovis comes in at a grand total of 55 points. Huh. <laughs> you, you sure there's not a decimal point missing there? <laughs> or a comma or a zero? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and he feels really good for 55 points. He is a gimme in every army. I feel like if you're not taking him, you're not playing the army right. Yeah, and if you don't paint him to tabletop standard or higher, then don't even, just stay home. Because <laughs> that guy, that guy requires... He, des he deserves a little bit of he love. He is screaming for a sexy painting. <laughs> All right. Awesome. Um, so the Locust is a bodyguard character, right? So he comes up with your characters and makes them a little bit better. Um, so he... Uh, in, so on a, he gets unquestioning loyalty on a two plus, basically. So he can intercept wounds on a two. Okay. Um, which is great. He's got good melee stats. He's got four attacks, weapon skill, two up. So, so he's basically the same thing as uh, uh, Marnius is Calgar's uh, bodyguard. Yeah. What were they called, Danny? Uh, the Vicatrican the Vicar Guard. Got right? it. Yeah, Vicatrican Guard. Okay, sounds right. Sounds sure. right. Um. He also has a minus one, an aura of minus one leadership within six. Um, he gets a six inch heroic intervention and he gets to pile in and consolidate. Um, uh, and when he does his heroic intervention towards the nearest enemy character, not the unit, not the closest model. So he can do oh. some cool little like tricks with that as well, which is really neat. So, has, go ahead. So basically you, you take the Clamus, uh, the Clamus and the Locust. Sure. And your squad, and you get in there, uh, and you're stuck into combat for a turn with uh, enemy character uh, Smash Captain Bob Jones. Okay, right? You're you're in there, and you manage to survive because you're able to slough off some wounds or dodge, do whatever mm -hmm. you need to do, uh, because you have your Gene Sealer called Brood Brothers uh, chaffing. Can the Patriarch then mind zap somebody in front of him who's getting a uh, minus one uh, leadership buff? Heck to... yeah, you can. Okay. So that gives a difference of two, right? You give him plus one leadership from the clam of us, minus you give the enemy minus one leadership from the locust. Profit. Um, so I was slightly wrong. He can't consolidate and pile in towards the nearest character, but he can heroic intervention towards the nearest character, which is really interesting because heroic intervention is like it, it's kind of misplayed quite often, where people think that you can't heroically intervene if you're in combat already. 
But as long as an enemy isn't in base-to-base -base contact with you, i.e. the closest character model for him, because he gets to heroically intervene towards the closest character, he can always do that. So he can move out of combat into combat with a character that's close to him. So he is very slippery and tricky. He also has a 5 plus invulnerable save and strikes first in combat. So if you charge him, he still gets to go. I mean, he doesn't go before you, but he can be chosen as like an inner space with the charging units, which is great. And he's going to clock in probably at 110, right? Um, oh, God. He's his <laughs> power level 2 and the Klamath is power. He's 30 points, isn't he? He's 40 points. 40 points, okay. Now, his Locust Blades, um, they increase his damage characteristic to 2 if he makes a charge move um, or performed a heroic intervention. So he's got four strength four attacks um, with damage two. So he's a bodyguard soaking up wounds who can also basically move and deal out damage like an assassin. Yeah. He's like a bodyguard assassin. A combination. That seems pretty good. That seems pretty good. For so the, 40, 40 points. For 40 points. The next model we're going to talk about can't clearly be just an assassin, right? Well, no. So what he actually is is an assassin assassin. An assassin assassin. Right, right. So this guy is a bodyguard assassin. He's just an assassin assassin. I'm sorry. Not just. He is. The Sanctus. All right. Power uh, level three. All right. What's your guess? Uh, for the Sanctus? Well, I, I, you haven't read me the stats yet. So All right. I, I can't... All right. I, I've got the points in my head. We'll, right. we'll, we'll go to so him. We got, I got 40 points for power level 2. I got 55 points for power level 3 here. Plus, I know this guy's amazing and should be 175 points. <laughs> <laughs> so this guy, I, as soon as you start telling me about him, I'm going to get to figure out what, what I think he should be. It's kind of like a fun little guessing game we're playing. Isn't it fun? That, that I suck at. <laughs> we need to we need to start our our uh, reviews that way. I think that's better. All right. So um, he actually has some options. Like the locust doesn't have any options. The sanctus does. So he can either be a fighty assassin or a shooty assassin. So if you're going to choose the fighty variant, right? He's got good weapon skill. He's got four attacks, um, which is all pretty good. Um, he has the he has a sanctus bio dagger, which is uh, strength one. So if you think about that for a minute, it's not his strength, it's just strength one. Okay. Minus two AP, two flat damage. Each time the bear attacks, it can make one extra attack. So it goes to five attacks. Okay. This model or this weapon always wounds on a two plus unless it fights a vehicle or a titanic unit. Okay. So he has five attacks at minus two, hitting on twos, wounding on twos, two flat damage. Pretty good. Yeah, that seems pretty good. And then he has the cult assassin rule. He can never have a warlord trait. The perfect ambush stratagem has a command point cost of zero if being used to affect this model. So that stratagem, uh, when you set up a model from, cult from underground ambush, you get to move d6 inches. Okay. So you deep strike and then move d6 inches. So you can be within three inches for a charge, which is pretty good. And he's pretty badass in close combat. He is, yeah. And then he has a camel cloak, which is a plus two to saving throws. Oh, sorry, you can either move D6 inches or shoot during the movement phase. So you can shoot twice, potentially. Oh, okay. Which is cool. Um, and then he also has a... So he gets a camel cloak for plus one cover save, right? Okay. And then he has... A, which will give him a three up save in cover, which is pretty good. And then he has a soul blight familiar, so you don't get cover when he shoots at you. All right. All right. So, in addition, so if for for a, a trivial extra amount of points, a trivial amount, okay. Yeah, uh, read five, five points. Okay. You can upgrade him to the silencer sniper rifle. So it's a heavy four. It's it's heavy one, so one shot, minus one, d three damage. And it's a sniper rifle, so you can shoot characters, and on a six, it does mortal wounds. If it does damage to a psyker, they take a perils of the warp after what? he shoots him. Yeah. So you do D3 damage and then another D3 mortal wounds from uh, from the perils. So for a paltry amount of points, which should clearly be like 100 for that gun, I feel like. I mean, just snipe, because you could target characters who are psychers right. and make them kill themselves. Yep. How are you doing, Magnus? Yeah, as soon as he gets, as soon as he gets that wound through, yes, he can do some, he can do some work. That, uh, well, Magnus ignores perils on a 2+. plus. All right, sorry. So... Uh, I how are you doing, like a, Sure, or Lord of Change, or whatever else. He'd be great at that. Um, so what's his points, Dave? Oh, so I'm, I'm going to say he's actually uh, he's going to clock in at 50 points flat. Um, I feel like that's... 
I, he doesn't feel too too powerful. You're getting dialed in here, I think, actually. Right. Uh, I, I feel like he's he doesn't feel too powerful, but he still has a lot of viable and uses, and probably will see a lot of play. So he's base, fifty five points. Okay. And then five points for the sniper rifle if you want to run that instead. All right. I think I would run him with. Uh, I oh. think I'd run him with a with a with a dagger. Yeah. Myself. Yeah, you, you have to want to run him with the sniper rifle. You have to think that your opponent, you're going to be running into a lot of psychers, like Eldar psychers. Sure. Um, and, and other stuff like I that. I can see him popping, like, not using underground ambush and using normal cult ambush. Yeah. Popping up from a marker on top of a building and just, like, at, or, like, next to an objective marker and just hanging out there at a three-plus save. Yeah. And then popping guys with the sniper rifle. I think that's pretty decent. And then if you use, you can use that stratagem um, so that he gets... Uh, uh, he gets to shoot twice with the sniper rifle, which is decent. Yeah, that well, and so if you hit the guy, if you hit a psyker, you're doing, you're making them take perils, right? So you have to do a, I believe, yeah, you have to do a wound to them. So you have to get through their save. Yeah, but Eldar psykers, I mean, they're like four up saves. Yeah, yeah. it's a heavy, heavy one weapon, right? So you yeah, get two shots with using that when you pop up. Yep. Yeah, let's see, math hammer wise, you're looking at probably because there's. I'd say you're probably going to get one through, yeah. right? Like, yeah. I think that's probably about accurate. So if you're running three of them and just popped up and... Oh, uh, God. Yeah. Well, you'd only get four shots, right? Because only one of them can shoot twice. Right. No, no. But still, means, like, yeah. you'll do damage. Yeah. That'll, that'll, that'll probably kill. I mean, so far seers you probably won't kill, but you could probably kill a warlock if they have that available for you to shoot. So I think he's a good model. I don't think he's a must-take, but I think he's definitely, like, a really fun unit that would be that could have some really cool um, yeah. usage. I don't know if I like him better than the Locust because his sudden strike where that, that, uh, <laughs> that heroic intervention is such an amazing rule. Like he can really slip in between units and do some damage. Yeah. All right. So <sighs> next guy, Keller Morph. Whoa. What a badass. All right. All right. Let's go with the, let's go with the Hexos first. Oh, the Nexos? Nexos first because. Okay. All right, so no, don't about, read the Keller Morph. I could talk about the Keller Morph. Don't read the Keller Morph, Dave. I could talk about the Keller Morph for days, Danny. <laughs> the model is so amazing. He's great. Um, tell, me about the, uh, tell me about the Nexos. So the Nexos, I think, is the other model that you're going to take every single game. Really? I think the Nexos is that good. So the Nexos uh, has an auto pistol. So, again, not a model that's designed for fighting, right? Right. But you could stick it on, on, on an objective in the backfield. He still has unquestioning loyalty, so you can slough off wounds to other units around him. Um, he has their strategic coordinator rule. Uh, after this model's been set up on the battlefield, you can select one of your ambush markers that's on the battlefield and remove it before setting it up again anywhere within your deployment zone and more than 12 inches from enemy models. So you get a free redeploy on one of your little markers. Okay. And that's after he appears. So, so it's... You just have to place him first. Right. So, um, and then uh, he has, in addition, if your army is Battleforged, rule 1d6... Each time either player spends a command point to use a stratagem, while any nexuses from your army are on the battlefield. If it's a command point that you spent, if there is at least one friendly cult primus and one nexus from your army on the battlefield, add one to the result. If a command point your opponent spent, if there's at least one cult clamavus and one cult nexus from your army on the battlefield, add one to the result. In either case, if the result is a six plus, you may gain one command point. So it's get a command point on a five plus, if you have both both of those characters on for every single command point that you spend. So you're going to get a command point every turn from him, I think. That's pretty good. Yeah, that's auto-include. And he's not, and so it doesn't take up a Warlord trait, it doesn't take up a Relic, um, which is so powerful. And so, Dave, he's three power level. What do you think his points are? Oh, for that ability? I've got him, I'm putting him at 55. He is 50 points. Damn it. So for 100, like, between him and the Clamavus... That's 105 points for some really great utility. Yeah, that's very viable. So I think they're both both awesome, and I would take them in every army. The Keller Morph is pretty close to an auto-include for me as well. I think he is one of the coolest models. Like, he is one of the coolest models ever, right? I think we oh, both hands, agree on that. hands down. Yeah, yeah. no. No, I, I'm, I, I have one. <laughs> so uh, he's got the Gunslinger rule. So first of all, let's go over his stats. Let's do that first. All right. Weapon skill three, ballistic skill two. Yeah, that's good. He's a good fighter. Four wounds, three attacks. Yeah, he's not He's not great in close combat. He's only strength three. No, he's, he's all about that shooting, that two-up shooting. That's custom level shooting. Heck right yeah. 
So he's got three Liberator auto pistols and a cultist knife. Each pistol is a 12 inch range pistol with two shots each at strength four minus, minus one, two damage. Yeah, that seems really good. So he gets six shots, right? Initially. Then he has uh, the gunslinger rule. So this model can target enemy characters, so he gets to snipe characters. And every time this model hits an enemy with a pistol weapon, it can make another additional hit roll against that target using the same weapon. So it could potentially have, uh, what was that, 6, 12? could potentially have 12 shots. Yes. 12 hits, right? Yeah. And so, like, he gets, I would say probably you're going to get 10. Yeah, that sounds about like, right. Like, by math. That's, that's, the way it should, that's the way it should work out. 10 hits on, at strength 4 with minus 1 on most characters at 2 flat damage yeah. is really good. Um, so if you're shooting at a Toughness 5 character, you're looking at 3 wounds. Um, if you're shooting a Toughness 4 character, you're looking at 5 wounds. Um, and then, like, if you're a 3 up, you're only saving half of those. That'll do 4, that'll do four or 6 wounds to a character and kill him for T4. I'm just if you're a T3, you're, you're going to be dead. I'm just a huge fan of, of taking, like, 2 or 3 of these guys and, and just having a good time with it, you know? Heck yeah! Even shooting a unit, they're good at that too. That's a lot of hits. Yeah, it is. Well, and, and, like, if you're shooting against... Uh, chaff to get your gene stealer cult in there. They're perfect chaff clearing. Sure. Amazing. Very good at that. And then uh, they have heroic deeds, heroic inspiration. If this model kills any enemy models with its ranged weapon, then at the, the and then until, until the end of the phase, we roll to hit rolls of one for attacks moved by friendly cult infantry units while they are within six inches of this model. So you pop up one, shoot it in a squad, right? Kill a couple guys. Right. With one next to him. So that he gets the rerolls. Oh God! So then you shoot him at the character, so you're getting twelve hits, like almost assuredly. It's a ninety-seven percent chance to hit. So three of them pop up together. Just bop, 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 bop. Yeah, so good. Good God! <laughs> and you could use perfect ambush on them, so one of them gets to shoot twice. <laughs> I know I'm not on camera, so they can't see me, but I think that was uh, I. That's pretty much mind blowing right there. That's holy crap! What it's. Is, Math wise, so shoot, first guy hits 10 hits so that everybody else around him gets the plus ones. So they're pretty much going to get auto hits on all of that. So that's what? Uh, 36 more shots? Yeah. Good 36 Lord. more hits. 36 more hits? Ah, uh, you're going to fail one eventually. Maybe. <laughs> you're going to fail one eventually. Let's see, at 36? Yeah, you might fail one. So probably 35. Holy crap. So. Super great. Like, what a great, what a great unit. Uh, so, points on him, Dave. Oh, I don't even... I, it's 300 Reeves? points per model, actually. I'm going with 300 points per model at that. <laughs> no, I'm probably 60 points, right? You're right on the money, Dave. 60 points is the, is the actual point cost of him. Um, and the Liberators are free, so he's I, literally 60 I, points. I really feel like 180 points for the ability to just nuke a character squad is 100% worth it. Oh, my God. Like against like Eldar Psychers and that yeah. kind of stuff, like the amount of damage that you can do with oh, this guy, a seer amazing. Council, just yeah. Oof. Oh baby. Yeah, hide if you want to, but I'm oh. coming for you. <laughs> All right. So, so then we have the Biophagus. which is he's a he's a really cool unit, right? He gives you uh, uh, his injector goat is a pretty solid weapon. Um, it does uh, it does uh, D three damage a piece. Uh, it makes him strength four, and it always wounds on a two plus unless it's against vehicle or Titanic. If you do damage to a character, you roll a d6, and if you roll higher than the model's the higher than the model's wound characteristic, it takes an extra d3 damage. Mortal wounds. But his close combat isn't why you have him. No. Although the idea of hitting somebody with that and injecting them with all the vials that are inside there and then yeah. watching them just explode like the <laughs> fist of the North Star just yeah. seems kind of fun to me. Super but, cool. But he's there for a completely different reason. Yeah, he has the genomic enhancement ability. Uh, and this is something that they previewed on Warhammer uh, Community. Yeah. Um, but basically, you roll a D3 for an aberrant unit, and you get... Uh, do you have to roll a 2 plus first? No. Yep. No. Oh, no. You roll so a D6 roll a D6 on a 1, yeah. a model is slain. That's Then you roll a D3. Yeah, you get to do it either way. You know, There is no failing in the roll. Right. Yet. It's whether or not... Yeah, just one, one of, of them might succumb. Guys. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think that's really awesome. Yeah, for sure. That's that's super cool. And you could CP that if you wanted to, if you were worried about it. Um, if you if you really needed a guy to live. I would CP it right into another one, actually. That is not <laughs> that would that's Dave's that's that's what we call Dave's luck. Yeah. Um so you give them uh, either plus one strength, plus one toughness, plus one attacks. And then the familiar, um, once per game, he he lets you do it on two D three if you pay the points for him. 
Wow, that's pretty good. Yep. And again, he's uh, pretty inexpensive, ultimately. Um, he is uh, 35 points. Really? Yeah, so he's really cheap. Oh, he's very... He's an auto-include if you love Aberrants. Sure. But not necessarily for everyone. I would, I would rate him like a 7 out of 10, I think. Nah, yeah. maybe a 6. I mean, it's, it's pretty... Because you have to do it to average. And the familiar is 12 points if you want to take him. Okay. So what you have to take... I mean, he's really only useful with the aberrant group. For sure. Right? So, so either an aberrant or, a, or an abominant. Yeah. If or, you're feeling ballsy, you don't want to lose... Because he'll die on a one. On a one. <laughs> Here's my warlord. I'm, he's dead. <laughs> <laughs> Whoops. And that's what we call Dave Luck. <laughs> so, um, yep, yeah, decent little character. Cool model. I like it oh, a lot. Oh, for sure. The model is awesome. That goad that he has with all the injections. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's like a man catcher, but with, like, needles. All right, so moving on to fast attack. We've got the Achilles Ridge Runners. Um, these are the new vehicle. Um, they're not super tough, so toughness five, eight wounds. So kind of like the new orc buggies, right, as far as toughness goes? Yeah, but fast. Yeah, movement 14 is really, is really fast. Um, and they have the scout vehicle rule, kind of like sentinels. Um, so before the first turn of the game, you can move them nine inches forward. So, um, I don't think that you can do that if you cult ambush them, though. Um, you mean put them under a blip? Yeah. Because you, you wouldn't be able to do it if you put them off the board, but... You can't put them off the board because they're a vehicle. Okay. Um, so yeah, you might start them on the table. People see them coming. I don't know, though. You may not want to move up that far if you i mean there's no there's not a great reason to do that i guess they, they have they have basic stats for speed or whatnot like we have but it's it's pretty pretty standard it, what makes them special is their weapons options right right so their weapon options are pretty good well they have a weapon option and they also have like an auxiliary slot that gives them a bonus so they have uh three different options for weapons they have a heavy mining laser a heavy mortar and a missile launcher so the heavy mining laser is a D3 shot last cannon. Enough said, right? That's right. decent. Um, then they have the heavy mortar, which is a mortar that's strength 5, minus 1 AP. Okay. Which is good, too. And they have a missile launcher, which is a standard missile launcher, no special rules. But. Um, so they also have two heavy stubbers, which is great, especially now that heavy stubbers are so cheap because they went down to two points. Um, you have three different extra options that you can give it. So you can give it the flare launcher, which gives it ignore, which gives it a feel no pain six up, and um, interesting. That's a, that's very interesting actually. Uh, giving a vehicle a six, uh, feel no pain. Yeah. That, well, I mean, actually, so most like the Goliath trucks and all that stuff has a six up feel no pain because they're rugged. I assume the flares are like because they like, like they shoot them off and it like distracts people shooting and that kind of stuff. Maybe. I mean, it's kind of cool. Yeah. And then, in addition, once per battle at the starting movement phase, you can select one unit of friendly cult bikers within six, and that unit moves an additional six inches if it advances. This turn, you don't have to roll the dice. So it's an auto six-inch advance, auto six. which is decent. Yeah, it's pretty good. Um, or you can give it a server auger, auger uh, which makes it ignore cover. Also good. Yeah, that's, that's good. I mean... If you're going to give it the mortar, I think that's solid. Yeah, it is. So then you can just sit in your backfield if you want to and lob the mortar shots. Um, it doesn't have to be fast. It can just sit there and shoot, too. Um, and then, or you can give it a spotter, and it increases the range of its ranged weapons by six inches. So, which, um, the heavy mine laser going to 42 is pretty good, um, and the heavy mortar going to 56 or 54 is decent. Like, that's yeah, an that's extra six inches is solid. Yeah. Um... It's not too expensive, actually. So how, how does it rank compared to like orc buggies? So I uh, like it's. I feel like it's pretty equivalent to an orc buggy. Uh, the orc buggies are a little bit tougher because they're toughness six, um, and they have better close combat abilities usually. But they're orcs, so it should yeah, that right. Makes sense. I mean, there's orcs carrying it. But the nice thing about these things is that they're about thirty points cheaper. Oh, that is pretty good. So um, the it starts at fifty points base. Um, the heavy mining laser is, I think, 25 points. Okay. Um, I mean, that's that's a yeah. two-shot last cannon, you said, right? D3 shot. D3 shot? Yeah. So, two-shot last cannon. Sure. Yeah, on average, it's two-shot last cannon. Uh, the heavy mortar is eight points, well, which it makes it really cheap, that's right? That's really good, actually. Um, and then the missile launcher is 15. 
Um, so the, and then the other options, the flare launcher and the spotter are both five points. The, sur the, uh, the survey auger is 10. Okay. So if you wanted to run it with a heavy mortar and survey auger, that would make it uh, 68 points. Okay. Which makes it 40 points cheaper than the cheapest orc buggy. Which wow. is, yeah, I mean, that's, that's good. All right, that's so good. competitively tabletop, not tabletop? Um, there might be a use for it. I think that you can combo it up with the Jackals if you really wanted to so you could get a first turn assault. Okay. Um, which I think could be decent, like just to tie stuff up with Jackals because they're kind of hard to kill. Okay. Um, but otherwise, I don't rate it super high. Like if you give it the Flare Launchers, right? You can make the Adelan Jackals, and we'll get to them in a minute, you can make them movement 20. And there's a psychic power that you can gas on to let them assault after they advance. All right, so basically it's it, it's kind of a utility uh, to keep up with the Jackals. Right. Vehicle. Sure, sure. Okay. And it's fast. I mean, 14 inches is fast. Yeah. No, so you is. can use it to cap some objectives like game and that kind of stuff if you're if you're losing stuff. And it's decently tough at eight wounds and a four up save. It's, uh, that's that's custom jet bike repulsor speed fast. That's actually really fast for a wheeled vehicle. I think so, yeah. So got some Jace and the wheeled warrior vibes. <laughs> All right. And then we've got the Adelon Jackals, which are probably the coolest new models in the in the new release to me. Like, so those good. dirt bikes are amazing. Yeah, they really are. And, they're, like, the models are characterful and everything else. Um, this unit has more options for equipment than any other unit that I can think of, to be honest. Like, there's more combinations. So... You can take any two choices from their from their uh, weapons list that you want to. So you can be shotgun auto gun, you can be shotgun uh, demo charge, you can be shotgun cultist knife, and then any combination thereof. There's probably like six or eight different options that you can take for them. That's impressive, actually. Yeah, and then the leader can have a power axe, and then for every so they come in groups of four. And then for every four, you can have uh, one uh, wolf quad, which is the four-wheeler. Right. The box set actually comes with a wolf quad and mm -hmm. four guys. Yep. So it's a yeah, five-man five box, more or less, right? No, it's way, it's way more than a five-man box. <laughs> <laughs> well, a, like a five-man unit you get yeah. every time, right? Yeah. Um, so they're just like normal bikers. They have two wounds. They have toughness four instead of toughness three, which is nice. And yeah. they have a five-up save. Um, they're fours and fours to hit because they are neophytes. So, I mean, they're not supposed to be like super good fighters or anything, right? Right. Um, <clears throat> uh, you can give the Wolf Quad um, a power pick if you want to. I thought that was a neat little option that you could give a little power weapon in there if you so desire. Um, and the Wolf Quad can take a Heavy Stubber, a Mining Laser, or an Adelan Incinerator, which is a, which is a Heavy Flamer with 12-inch range, which is nice. Whoa. That's great. So moving 14 and then shooting 12 is pretty is pretty rad for a flamer. That's yeah. So it's a really cool combo with these guys and one of the uh, strat well, a couple of the stratagems, right? So the rusted claw has a stratagem that gives you plus one to hit and plus one to wound with demo charges. Right. And then they have uh, like a more grenade stat like strat like the orcs and the death guard and the uh, and the uh, imperial guard. Okay. Uh, where they where up to 10 models can throw grenades. Five of them can be demo charges. So you can throw five demo charges with plus one to hit, plus one to wound. And a demo charge is basically a battle cannon shot. So it's uh, strength eight minus three D3 damage. Um, <laughs> I, I, sorry, you said you could do five of those? Yeah, so you can do five D6 shots, hitting on threes, wounding on whatever. Strength eight, so with plus one to wound. So mostly I would say on vehicles, either wounding on threes or twos. Um, and in addition, you can take the Jackal Alphas and like target that unit and give them plus one to hit. So they're hitting on twos. So I think that combo is kind of neat. Like you can do some huh. cool stuff with throwing, gren with throwing grenades. Just, just run by chucking of, of demo charges. Yeah, sure. Why not? Oh my God. <laughs> God that sounds so good. <laughs> so I think these guys are going to be a great unit. Uh, otherwise, like if you're not going to do the demo charge trick, even giving um, them shotguns and auto guns, I think is good. Because then that gives them four shots a model at 12 inches. Oh, right, because you can fire both sets of weapons. Heck yeah. One in each hand, baby. I, you know what? I, I challenge you to get on a motorcycle and shoot a shotgun and a pistol at the I'll same time. I'll show you. I, 
I have a motorcycle. Okay. We will make this happen this summer. <laughs> Stay tuned for, for Danny Knievel's <laughs> shotgun pistol tour, shortly followed by Danny's trip to the hospital. With a broken neck. <laughs> <laughs> now you'll have a helmet on. Oh. You'll be fine. Cool. I, I really I can't, like this unit. I'm looking forward to that concussion, Dave. Yeah, you're <laughs> I, I really like this unit, and I, and I really, really, I, I want it to. Uh, I want to say that it's going. It's definitely going to see play. Um, oh, I at, think for sure. At a competent level. Sure. Um, maybe not with the quad, the wolf quad in it. Heck yeah, I put the wolf quad in there. Oh yeah. Yeah. So these guys are bikers, so they can do the underground ambush. Doesn't the, doesn't the wolf quad get the vehicles? Uh, nope. He's a biker keyword. Oh! They all have the biker keyword. God. That's impressive. <laughs> all right. Never mind. I stand corrected. They will definitely see tabletop play. I, I think so, for sure. Uh, Going to be a top table next year. Well, I don't know about stuff. that. I mean, I think they're good. I like, mean, it's a year away from now, Danny. How do you know? It's going to happen. Sure. Anything could happen Not a year from now, Dave. Could take this list <laughs> that we have concocted today. Yeah, sure. How much do we have to pay for that? <laughs> it's expensive. Ah. Sp sponsorship is a hell of a thing. It would man. be worth it. Yeah. Uh, all right. These guys are really good. Uh, buy 15 yeah. boxes of them. Plus the models are awesome. So yeah. that doesn't hurt. That's probably influencing my decision a little bit. But like, like I think they look so cool that you could definitely make them work. There's some combos there. I really feel like you could take these models, just take the, the riders off of these and set them to the side. And then you could take riders off of crocodiles and put them on top. And then you have <laughs> rough rider models. For you could have some super cool rough rider yeah, models. Yeah, really cool rough rider models. <clears throat> or you could give these, or just, or literally just give these guys power lances and call them uh, Brood Brothers Outriders. Mm -hmm. Or Bro Bro Brood Brothers Rough Riders, I'm sorry. Uh, like, that'd be easy to do. And that would be cool. Yeah. Thematic. Yes. Hell yes. Uh, and so we're on to the regular Sentinels. So these guys are more Brood Brothers stuff. Um, they do have Cult Ambush, which is cool. Um, but otherwise, they're unchanged for their Imperial Guard uh, versions. Yeah, they're just Imperial so Guard. So they're, they're fine. Um, there's nothing wrong with them. Sentinels are okay. Especially Cult Scout Sentinels are better, I think, than the Armored ones. But it depends how you want to do the, it, it depends on how you want to do the loadout. Um, <clears throat> then you have Cult Lehman Russ. Which is, took a points drop to match the Imperial Guard Lehman Russ, um, which is great. Yeah, that's smart. Yeah, sure. And it also has Cult Ambush as well. So you can ambush your Lehman Russes, which is awesome. Um, so you can bring them up wherever you need them to do the most damage. Uh, <coughs> uh, uh. Yeah. <laughs> now the Goliath Rock Grinder is oh sorry yeah. you also have well, brood I brothers mean, heavy weapon squads yeah it's, it's an imperial guard heavy weapon you squad. can take mortar squads now right great that's awesome that'd be a great thing to stick next to your nexos as a guy that is not happy with the way that mortars are playing right now against orcs that you said that with absolute <laughs> happiness now nah, you got to play around them man yeah. you got to know how to deal with them um the, the goliath rock Rangers is the same as it was before a little mm -hmm. different i change. think it's so it dropped a lot of points okay um, so I think when I was doing the math, uh, if you give it the cache of demo charges and a clearance incinerator, which is what I would take because I like flamers, um, and the clearance incinerator is the same weapon the Hellhound has more or less. Oh, okay. Um, it's 120 points, which I thought was a good deal, relatively speaking. Um, it still has, it has cult ambush. It has rugged construction. So it gets, it gets a six up feel no pain all the time. Um, it does only have... Uh, 10 wounds and a 4-up save, so it's less durable than a Hellhound is. Okay. Um, by a little bit. But... But you can't actually take Hellhounds with Brood Brothers, right? You can. Okay. You could take a Brood Brother Hellhound if you wanted to. All right. But this has transport This has transport capacity, so you can have six guys inside. Um, and it also has the Drill Dozer Blade. So... As someone who really loves crashing vehicles into my enemy and watching them scream as they get ground up into, into little pieces, like, I love myself some, uh, uh, oh, God, the bone, the bone Breaker from Orcs. Yeah. Anyway, um, <laughs> so at full strength, it gets six plus D3 attacks on the charge. Okay. Uh, or at full tier, right? Six plus D3 attacks on the charge. They always hit on fours. They don't, that doesn't degrade. At strength nine... Minus two AP, D3 damage a piece. That seems pretty good. It's pretty solid for, like, you don't want to, it's a, it's a flamer that you also don't want to charge very often unless you think you can kill it in one go. Because even getting that, even getting, like, some attacks is going to hurt. That's, I mean. I, yeah, I think there's, I think they're at least decent. Like, I think that that's a solid unit. 
and I would like to play around with them a little bit more. All right. So. What's next? Next, we have our two transport dedicated transport options. So we have the Goliath truck. Um, Goliath truck dropped a bunch of points. I think, I believe, I remember it being seventy points now. Um, yeah, it's fifty. It's fifty points base, um, and then it has uh, two auto cannons. Yeah, two auto cannons and a heavy stubber, so that makes it seventy two points, full kit. Um, unless you take demo charges, then a cache of demo charges, then it's uh, eighty two points. Okay. Um, but it's got, oh, it's a twin auto cannon. It's less points than that then. <laughs> All right. So it's yeah, twin, oh no, it's same points, same points. Okay. So still has the same rugged construction. It gets open topped as opposed to the rock grinder. Um, so all 10 guys inside can shoot out of it as well, which right. is, not, which is cool. Yeah, that's nice. Um, so you could take a couple of guys with demo charges or a guy with one guy with demo charges to throw out. And then also the cache of demo charges to throw out as well. I'm hearing a lot of what I heard when you and John were talking about the, the orc codex for stuff like that. <laughs> I'm feeling like this is a orc cult 2.0. <laughs> and I'm really liking it. I, I mean. So there's a really great detachment in the Vigilus, uh, in the Vigilus book for these guys, for these guys and Acolytes, um, where you can, you can, after you move this thing, you can disembark. So you can cult ambush these. Then advance and move them, right? Uh, right. If they're, as an example, if they're twisted helix, <laughs> they get plus two to advance rolls or advance moves. Uh huh. So it's ten, or sorry, it's twelve, plus d plus d six plus two. So it's an average of like seventeen inches, and then your dudes get to get out three and move. So that's a pretty much a first turn assault, I think. Like most of the time. Yeah, that sounds like it could be. So. Uh, on average, you're going to get, well, you're going to get like uh, nine inches of movement out, out of the vehicle. So 14, 17 and a half inches plus nine inches. I mean, you're in the enemy deployment zone, literally. That's a first turn. <laughs> what is that? What's, what's the secondary for that? That's. Um... Oh, that's first strike or first blood. No, 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 no. Being, well, that doesn't have to that. There's one that is. Oh, behind enemy lines? Yeah. <laughs> well, you have to start your turn in their deployment zone. But still. Yeah, but fair I enough. Mean, as opposed to being, you know, having to deep strike somebody down there, you can still deep strike stuff on the other side. You, just another option to score stuff. Yeah, but that gives you first I mean, turn, right? If, for those that aren't familiar with the ITC that I just launched into there, sorry. <laughs> um, yeah, that, that, seems, that seems pretty good. Um, Cult Chimeras, basically just a basic Chimera? Yeah, and it's, and it's gotten the same points decreases as the Astro Militarum okay. one did when the new, uh, uh, when the, what is it, Chapter Proof came out this year. All right. So, which is great. So. It's still, so arguably a better choice in a lot of situations to take the Chimera because it's tougher because it has a three up save instead of a four up and it has toughness seven instead of toughness six. Yeah. So just depending on what you want to do. But then we come to... They're the, roughly the same points. Then we come to this sexy beast, which... So the first fortification I've seen in a while that actually might see competitive play, we'll see. Um, it has some amazing abilities. Um, so first of all, uh, it's 75 points, which is pretty, which is relatively inexpensive. Yes. You can't kill it. So oh, it's, invi it's invincible. Okay, right. I like the mech workshop, which you can't blow up either. Correct. Because it has no stat line. Which I think is good for the terrain in general. Like, if you're going to buy a piece of terrain, your enemy shouldn't be able to blow it up most of the time. Like, I really wish Wraith Gates were like that, because those would be way more viable if that was the case. The Imperial Fists beg to differ, Danny. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, um, it has the... Uh, uh, it has a sector mechanicus structure rules. So basically, like when you're on it, you get a cover save if your inventory models. Um, you can you have to go up the girders to the ladder to get up to next levels, that kind of stuff. Okay. Um, <clears throat> That's standard stuff. Yep, yeah, pretty much. Um, and so uh, it has the underground ingress rule. Um, so once per turn uh, in that mo in the movement phase, one infantry or biker unit that has called ambush um, can move off the battlefield and then re deep strike the next turn. As long as the whole unit is within one inch of the bottom level of this. That seems, I, I mean, that seems pretty good. Yep. So they go down the tunnel, the drill is, the drill is made, and then pop up somewhere else. Yeah. No, that, that, that feels pretty good to be able to. Um, now, my, my question is, and I know it, I don't think it's been answered anywhere yet, is after turn three, you know, stuff that isn't on the board, so you can still do that? Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. There's no, there's no penalty there in match play um, for something that started on the board. 
goes off the board, comes back on, no problem. So you can like capture an objective or get into your opponent's deployment zone for line breaker or something like that quite easily with that. Yeah, that's, that seems pretty Which solid. Which is really neat. Um, and then you have the activate the drill rule. So if a model from your army is on it, um, you can activate the drill. Um, roll a d6 for every unit on the ground level that's within three inches of just the tip of the drill. On, uh, and then add one every, uh, each other time the drill has been activated during the battle. If the result is less than six, the seismic tremors rule takes effect. Oh, I'm sorry. My bad. I, I, I misread. So roll a dice for, for each unit within three inches of the, of the bottom of the drill when it activates. On a six, they take D6 mortal wounds. Right. Because they get hit by the drill. Yeah. Um, but there's then, two different types of drill type, right? Well, yeah, it depends on, on how, how, deep, how deep you've delved, right? <laughs> whether, you've delved too, whether you've dug too greedily into the earth. Um, so the, if, you haven't, if you haven't delved that far, um, so, you roll if the, so then you roll another dice. If the result is less than a six, you take the seismic tremors. If it's a six or more, then you do the seismic quake. And you're going to add one every, t for every time you activate the drill. So seismic tremors... Until the start of your next movement phase, subtract two from charge rolls made by units while they are within 12 inches of this model. This does not affect units that fly, and the effects of multiple seismic tremors are not cumulative. Okay. Which, fair enough. So if you had two of them, yeah. Right, sure. Then you have the seismic quake. So if you really destabilize the Earth, this is like the doomsday. Um, draw an imaginary straight line one millimeter in thickness from any point on the battlefield edge to any other point on the battlefield edge in such a way that it crosses the tectonic drill. Uh, tectonic frag drill. This, by the way, is one of the coolest sounding things <laughs> to me. It's, it's, it's super rad. The earth is literally cracking apart, right? right? Um, and then uh, roll a d6 for every unit uh, that's on this that this line crosses that's on the ground level. On a four up, they take d3 mortal wounds and their move characteristic is halved. So it doesn't affect units that fly, but it, man, it can destabilize stuff really hard. And it's a smite. Um, yeah. but on a four plus against, you could do it against characters, like whatever, there's no targeting you just, rules. You just draw a straight line. And it's every model underneath the line on both sides of the, the line though, right? It's every unit. Every, I'm sorry, every yeah. unit. Yeah, yeah, That's That's what I mean. Yep. So you just draw, yeah, I mean, good Lord. That just seems very good. It's really powerful. And what are the odds of rolling that? You roll a d6, so turn two, you get a six, five, four. By, by turn three, by turn three, Four, you're almost assuredly casting it. Yes. And Which is awesome. Yeah. and So I'm imagining like a cult nexus on this thing. Yeah. Just hanging out, yep. CP, like farming CPs, pressing the button on the drill. Yep. Drill, baby, drill. <laughs> just, <laughs> just go to town on it. That's right. So a decent choice. I'm the only, the only thing that I question is giving up an entire detachment for for this for this for this thing and i that's probably the only limiting factor on its effectiveness i think otherwise it's a gimme for 75 points because it gives you yeah. a nice little fire base you can get cover in on the first turn and you can re-deep strike your stuff which is great it, yeah all right so they go over the war gear of the cult i didn't notice any big changes in as far as like how good stuff is now um it seems like it's pretty much the same as it was before Okay. Um, the rules are, are fairly similar. So Same more of that. Some this. great battle scenes with the Vicka Chicken Guard. And then you have uh, the actual rules, right? So you've got the Insurrection. Um, so Insurrectionists basically gives you uh, uh, objective secured. Okay. Right? Now, <clears> that, <throat> does every, every model in the Gene Steeler cult have that ability? Uh, or how do they how do they gain that ability? All troop units in Gene Stealer Cult and Brood Brothers detachments in your army gain the uh, insurrectionist okay, ability. Okay, so just just your standard objective secured rule for troops. Yeah, nothing crazy like custodians or something. Okay, they do have some special match rules, play, match rule plays though. Um, so they have the gene sex rule. Which means you can include each Gene Stealer Cult's character only only once in the okay. same detachment. So you can only take one Patriarch, one uh, one Magus, for example. In a detachment. In a detachment. But you can so have you can't like so. sure, but you can't like double up two icon wards. Okay. Right. And then you have the Broodfather rule. 
If your if your army includes any patriarchs, no other gene stealer cults or brood brothers characters can be your warlord. So he has to be your warlord if you take him. So you you technically can't have more than one patriarch. No, you can have more than one patriarch. They just have to be in different detachments. But if you have a patriarch, he has to be your warlord. Right. So, but if you have two patriarchs, you one of them has to be your warlord. Well, okay. Right. It says no other characters can be your warlord. I don't know. That's a that's a interpreting rule. So okay. I mean, I think you're right. I, I think the way it reads is is that, but it's one of those. Oh, we're going to see it in Red Magenta on the next FAQ. Maybe, yeah. So. Well, and I think that they kind of broke the precedent of having one brood, brood lord now, or one uh, patriarch. With that awesome story. Heck yeah. Oh, Tales from Vigilance, baby. That was so good. <laughs> that was so good. Those are great. Um, so what else? And so you've got cult creed, so that gives them the cult ability. Um, and so uh, if all the cult infantry and biker units, they get a cult creed, um, which we'll go over in a moment. Um, and then you have the Brood Brothers rules. And the Brood Brothers rules are really extensive and specific. I mean, they take up one whole, like, column here. Like, like, almost entirely too much for us to even go into at this point. Yeah, but we kind of explained it earlier. Basically, yeah. it lets you take an Astro Militarum detachment yep. in your army. Um, as Brood Brothers, they replace Regiment or, I thought this was interesting, Militarum Tempestus with the Brood Brothers rules. So you can have Brood Brothers Scions. Ooh. Which I thought was really cool. Like, I think that might be interesting. Yeah, it would. So that gives you another deep striking unit they can shoot? Yeah. You know, plasma. Because that's what you need is more good stuff. Heck yeah. Well, yeah, yeah, you do. Ah, neat. All right, so then we get to the the cult creeds. Uh, I'm not going to go over these um, because... Uh, They've they, already been gone over. Yeah, right? they went over them in the Warhammer community site, so if you want to check those out, like just go to the GW website and they will hook you up. Obviously, the best one is just Twisted Helix, and we'll call it that and turn the page. Well, no, okay. Turning the page. All right. <laughs> we're turning the page. <laughs> Stratagems. They've got some awesome stratagems. All right, I want your best three stratagems. Okay, cool. Um, so I'm going to go with... Uh, oh, man, I only get three? Yep, you <laughs> only get three. Ooh, hold on a second. Um, all right, so I'm going to go over three that haven't been... Uh, that haven't been spoiled yet. We're going to go with Lurk in the Shadows, Brood Coven, um, and... Let's see here. <laughs> Danny didn't know I was going to do this to him, so... You son of a bitch. All right, I'm going to go with uh, Vengeance for the Martyr. S martyred. We'll go with that All one. Right. I like that one quite a bit. All right. And why do you think these stratagems are good and, and are essential to know and learn? So, oh, actually, no, I'm not going to do that one. I'm going to do one of the more important ones. All right. Yeah, that's fair. Um, so I'll do... I'm just going to edit this all out anyway. It's that's fine. fine. Thanks, Dave. I appreciate it. Yeah. Uh, so we'll go with... Uh, uh, that one's not good. Where's where's a uh, perfect? You going with the Vect perfect one? ambush? You going That's with the Vect one? No, no, I'm going to no. do perfect ambush. Oh, perfect ambush. So lurk in the shadows. Use the stratagem at the start of your opponent's shooting phase. Select a Gene Stealer Cult's infantry unit from your army that is entirely on or within any terrain feature. Until the end of the phase, enemy models can only shoot at that unit if it's the closest unit to them. So as long as you have some like little guardsmen like like blocking the way or closer, you can hide your gene stealers, you can hide your aberrants, you can hide whatever, and it's basically a cloud of flies as long as your guys are in uh, in terrain, which is an amazingly powerful stratagem. That's really good. Yep. So I think that one's going to be played quite a lot. Are you expecting that? All right. Perfect ambush is the one that allows you to. Um... Use a stratagem in the moment phase immediately after you set up an infantry or biker unit from your army that has a cult ambushed ability on the battlefield. That unit can either move D6 inches, even if it has arrived as reinforcements, or it can shoot with all of its ranged weapons as if it were your shooting phase. Using the stratagem in your own turn does not prevent that unit from shooting in your own shooting phase or making a charge move in the charge phase of this turn. So, kind of a replacement for the old table that let them move closer and like be able to get like almost an assured assault. Right. Uh, it's 3 CP, though. That's... Right? Am I, yep, you're right. I mean, I'm, I'm reading it upside down, so... Totally worth it. Yeah? I think. I, I, I actually kind of agree with you. Yeah, so. I think it's super powerful. Especially, like, with the Ketomorph, um, or the... Sorry, yeah. Kellermorph. Is it Kel? Yeah, yeah. Kellermorph. Kellermorph. And then... Uh, the gunslinger. Sure. Or Aberrants. Yeah. To make sure they get in there. Like, that's huge. Oh, yeah. That's a gimme. So, the final one that I have is one that I haven't seen, like, talked about very much, but I think it's going to get taken every single game. Okay. The Brood Coven. Use this strategy before the battle if your warlord is a patriarch. Select up to one magus and up to one primus from your army. Generate a warlord trait for each of these for each of these models. 
Wow. I'm sorry. So you're having you just you just whipped out three warlords. Yep, for one CP. Whoa. And their warlord traits are hell good. Wow, that's <laughs> that's really good. Yeah. And so, like, yeah, you get three warlords. Um, you they all have to take different traits, so they can't take the same trait. Right. And you can only use it once per uh, once per battle. So you couldn't like keep giving like more mag more Magus's and Primus's uh, oh, warlord traits, which is just, which is good. Just stacking them over and over again. Yeah. Right. All right. <clears throat> All right, otherwise, like, man, there are so many good stratagems. Like, definitely read these, because uh, you're going to want to know what these do. I mean, the the um, the interrupt your stratagem stratagem, which is... Um, That's the, uh, what is that, Forearmed Emperor? Cult of the Forearmed Emperor. Cult of the Forearmed Emperor is, is going to get changed. It's going to get frequently asked. I feel like it should be 4 CP. Otherwise, yeah. Dark Eldar players are going to riot. Yeah. So, um, you know. But, yep, uh, otherwise, really good ones. Um, uh, yeah, definitely check those out. Um, so then they have the Broodmind Discipline. Um, so the powers are the same other than you got three new ones. Um, so you got Psionic Blast, uh, let's see, Mental Onslaught, and Psychic Stimulus. Uh, Psionic Blast, roll 2d6 and compare it to the highest leadership characteristic of the unit. If it's, uh, if it's less than the, less than leadership, then they take one mortal wound. If it's higher, then they take d3 mortal wounds. Okay. It's only a five, which is nice. And it's so it's a targeted smite, which is also really good. Uh, that's, because that's the leadership one that no. continues? No. Okay. Psychic stimulus is the lead, or the mental assault is the leadership one. Okay. Warp charge six. If it's manifested, select like an enemy model within 18 inches invisible to the psyker. Each player rolls a d6 and adds their model's leadership characteristic to the result. If your score is higher, the enemy model suffers one mortal wound. If the and if the selected model is still alive, then you repeat the process until Either the selected model is destroyed, or you fail to inflict one mortal wound by having a score higher than your opponent's. Well, if you enjoyed that, I've been Dave with Mob Rules, and with me earlier was Danny. Now, uh, we greatly appreciate everybody who comes out and watches the videos and listens to the podcast. Uh, Danny and I will be down in LVO, hanging out. Uh, we've got some stickers to give out. If you saw the stickers at the beginning and you're something that you're interested in, we got some of those. Uh, if you want to support the podcast, you can buy a sweatshirt at our store. I'll put the link down below. Um, anything you want there. Uh, if you want to, uh, to support us uh, on our Patreon, we don't have any tiers. It's just, if you want to, go for it. If you don't, go for it. I think right now we're up to uh, four... Four locos, so we're pretty happy with that. Anyway, I've been Dave with Mob Rules with the pleasure to be with Danny to record and review the Gene Steeler Cult book. It is going to be insane. It is so, so good. I'm ready to throw away my custodes and start over again. Anyway, have a great day. <laughs>